almost the same <coughs> as the header. So actually, header, the framework has a two parts. One is the HDFS, header distributed file system. Another one is the map reduced programming. So map reduced programming is the uh, programming framework to use the, this one. So like the parallel program. Nowadays, not many use. But still, the old, little bit, the old version of the big data solution use this one. But all of the Hadoop solution, big data solution, is based on the Hadoop distributed file system, which means the file system is the logical one, but they are distributed. And to support the challenge of the big data, like the scalability and the consistency and the recoverability, so these are implemented the sort in the HDFS. That was started from the GFS. So understanding Google file system is everything to understand the HDFS. So that is the first reading or something you can read and understand that most of the such a company they do not release the, their the the local the implementation, but the Google actually release the publish the, the, the Google file system to the public the 2003 and the map reduced on the 2004. After that, the people the, who are, have been struggling from the big data, like the, even at that time there is no concept of the big data, but the, those who are struggling from the size of the data and the, they try to use the Google file system, then the, they are adapted to the Apache Foundation, the open source product. So Apache Foundation, <coughs> the Pick up the Google file system as the Hadoop, the distributed file system. Still, the Hadoop is the, uh, the main, the uh, Apache Foundation open source the project. So, still, the, so right now it's a 2.0. Hadoop the 2.0 is the, the current version, so, but the, they are based on the Google file system. They are using Java. So they are fully implemented based on the Java. Okay, there's a high level language. And uh, to understand, the, because of that, to understand the map reduced programming, it's so you better know the, the Google practice very basic, the map reduced programming. So if you know the basic Java, so there might be no problem. But nowadays it can be streamed to the other programming languages, the Python and the other programming languages. And plus, the, in this class, we are going to use the Spark as the, the big data. In, the, in addition to the map reduce, we will use the Spark. Nowadays, the Spark is the, uh, more, the much more popular than the map reduce for the uh, big data the processing product. I want to explain the more details about the, uh, the head of the distributed file system. Uh, several of the very well-known characteristic is the first one is a block. So block, what is a block? It's the input and output, the unit. So if you took the operating system class, there is an OS block. OS block is the basic unit of the I.O. So that is a 512 byte. To the sometimes a 2K. And the database has the also database block size. So like the 2K, 4K, 8K, that is the IO unit. So even though I select the one data, the select the name from the student ID is the one on one, but the entire block will be returned to the memory and the cache buffer. So that is the block size. Hadoop, the solution used a lot much bigger the block size, that is a 64 megabyte or the 128 megabyte wide. So mostly the big data solution is not online transaction processing. Rather, this is the, the batch processing. You try to process entire amount of the data, okay, huge amount of the data, rather than the select one specific, the, uh, this one, which means the, it might be possible, in, so we, we, we try to reduce the overhead in <coughs> output. 
So if we increase the block size, so it will group the batch processing, it will group big data processing. So uh, to use the 64 megabyte or the 128 megabyte. Just such a huge block size. Yeah. Basically, the head is based on the master and slave architecture, which means there is a master node and there are slave nodes, which is called the data node. And this is called the naming node. So they are communicate each other, then the, they the naming node is in charge of the entire the data structure of the file system. Then each of them has the uh, the data, and also they have the copy of the data, which means if we store the A here, another A, and another A, and they are streaming the right, okay, like that. So that can support the recoverability, even though one of them is failed, the other node can support. That can be used. And also, even though processing of the A is uh, slow, so sometimes uh, this node is uh, very busy, then the day stop and uh, the uh, take over the job through the another server that has the same data and process and try to catch a big compute. Then the, if this one is fast and stop and uh, so on. So this one will be governed by the this master node. It's basically master and the slave number of slave. The Professor? Yes. Uh, why uh, does it use only 64 or 128? Or why not 32 or 2048 or anything other five? That's a good question. The 32, I think, is based on the experiment, I think, that they try. So we can do the bigger size, or we can do the smaller size, but the uh, option the, as a default 64 megabyte is the, as a default the block size in the uh, head. System. The most of them use the 64 megabyte. Even though they use like the 256 megabyte, that doesn't mean you can get the four times benefit of them. So slightly, sometimes it will be decreased the performance because it's too much big and there is a, a lot of the uh, uh, there might be the waste of time to load. It. So it's a 64 megabyte is mostly used the block size. So we can change the block size. Yes, thing. we can change. For tunnels, I the briefly introduced. We will discuss some more the details of them the uh, next class. Okay, so that's uh, just the overview of the big data solution, and uh, this is a uh, kind of a landscape of the big data three four years ago. You can see a lot of them. Many of the companies use the uh, Hadoop and the big data solution. This is uh, the 2017. I think the most of, of the company names are here, which means the, each and every company nowadays they use the big data solution as a. Uh, so, simply, I think uh, near soon we don't need the big data. The class. Instead, uh, this will be part of the operating system class, or the something that it will replace the many part of or the so part of the database class or part of the uh, operating system class. I believe, and the part of data mining class. So, but uh, this is kind of transition from the uh, legacy system to the big data solution. I think uh, uh, eventually. This will be general solution, which means it will be part of the proper system. For example, the IBM used the Hadoop and the NoSQL database as a part of the, their IBM analytics the platform. IBM recently, the, like the last few years, they the, throw away all their business except data analytics. For example, think of Lenovo. Uh, IBM Letter. I can think that IBM Letter is uh, right now the, I think the Chinese company, China, they own the, uh, the think that. And also IBM Power Chip, they do not have the business uh, more, the IBM the processor. 
no more. So they sell and the semiconductor, for example, uh, I, uh, by the way, I direct him the inviting the one of my friends who worked for the semiconductor part, part in the uh, IBM, he worked in the Austin, the Texas. Because uh, the Austin there are several the semiconductor company, IBM, the Samsung and so on. But uh, they stopped uh, their business for the semiconductor. Then he actually designed the uh, the chip for the semiconductor. But uh, he moved to the uh, white plane. The nearby here, then the, what he is doing is uh, he is part of the civil engineering to design the energy. So main part of his job when he designed the uh, the chip is to reduce the energy, how to optimize the energy consumption of the chip. That is exactly same as the civil engineering, how to make the power grid optimize the, the power supply in the downtown, the Manhattan, or the something city. So he used, the, his the job is to design, to work with the civil engineering to the design. At that time, the, he, the, you, he said that he used such a big data solution. So, IBM, actually right now is a data an analytics business. Everything that they use the header and the NoSQL solution for the data. They do not throw away the business intelligence. So still, the most of the company they keep the business intelligence, but this will be replaced by the uh, productive analysis eventually. And also, they use the, the spot analytics rather than the map videos. You can see the map videos here. But instead, uh, they are using the spot analytics. Then the spot can be combined with the other machine learning the solution easily. This is a kind of nonsense to wrap support the big data solution. And the, this one. So they couldn't throw away the relational data based model. I didn't actually throw away the, uh, give up the all other business uh, except the data analytics. But the uh, Oracle, they could not throw their the, uh, traditional business, the relational model. So that is everything of the Oracle. But uh, they pretend that they can support also the Hadoop solution. It's a kind, really kind of opposite solution. It cannot be at the same time. Okay, I still do not see the, any benefit of using the header for the relational database model. So the, whatever the, the business solution uh, in the Oracle, they are based on the Oracle relational database. So that is the main the problem. Terraita who are doing the data warehousing system and the eventually business, they actually the use the the simultaneous with the Hadoop solution for the some the, you can see the kind of the unstructured <coughs> or semi-structured data they use the Hadoop and for the traditional legacy system. So many of the company the like the such a, the a solution they do not the, replace the all the uh, the traditional the data warehouse system by the Hadoop. Is that they use both of them. So depending on the type of the data, like the uh, unstructured or semi-structured data, they prefer to use the Hadoop and solution big data solution. The other, like the SQL or the other the traditional the system, they use the data warehousing system, eventually the business intelligence, the BI tool. Microsoft also support the, uh, the big data solution. Like here, Hadoop on the Windows Server. So on Windows Server, it supports the Hadoop. But I didn't, I never used the, the I never seen the, this solution yet. But uh, <coughs> Microsoft Azure is uh, the uh, one of the, I think, the, where is the Azure? Here, it's not here. So that is the, uh, uh, now it is uh, popular. 
EMC definitely is so good. EMC is a hardware company, like the storage. But uh, they like to uh, possess a lot of the software company, and also they like to support the such a Intel solution, the, including the Spark and the other the, the application solution, like the SAP business, so on. But still, the, their main business is the, the uh, hardware, the storage. But storage is very close to the file system, so I think the, their the business model makes sense. Then, I do not explain the details, but the main part of the quad, the component of the Hadoop is actually file system plus the framework, programming framework, back reduce. Then eventually this one is replaced by the another the uh, solution. This part is not exactly the same as the this level, but the including the such a the, uh, programming framework and also Spark support the HDFS and the other source. So then, these two are the main part of the Hadoop, plus there are a lot of the component, which is called the overall ecosystem. So Hadoop uh, actually starts from the understanding the distributed file system, and uh, you are able to use the, the, this one, plus the little bit the MapReduce, and plus later the Spark. Then, after the, 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 before that, the, we will the, see the several F3. There are many, the head of ecosystem, which means it's kind of the, um, it's, it is not easy to say this is an application program, but the, on top of the file system and the map reduce, there are many other the convenient the program. Most of them are optional, for example, so I'd like to get the, for example, get the data from the traditional the ERP solution to the Hadoop. Well, the relational database to the Hadoop. You can do the program, okay? And they're using the ODBC and uh, whatever, so you can do the, read the data from the SQL and uh, uh, upload the data into the, like uh, you can make the CSV file, the CSV, CSV format file and upload to the head. Then there are solutions already. Like the, for example, the scoop. So you can use the existing solution. That the component of the solution is called the head of ecosystem. You don't have to know, you don't have to use all of this, but the, based on the business requirement, we need the, this one, this one, you can select such an ecosystem. Okay? So for example, I need to import the data from the uh, relational database to the Hadoop file system. At the time, you can use the, uh, the name, the scope, so you can use the scope. Well, the, my data source is the, not the relational database, it's uh, the log data. So a lot of the uh, log data are generated from the server. Such a log data is the kind of line by line. The log data can be the convert, uh, the ETA, it's called the ETA extractor transfer. Uh, Load the ETL solution is so called the flow, like that is. So who we see such a number of the head of ecosystem? This is the old version of the head of ecosystem, and some of them are uh, still used, like the flow and uh, scoop and uh, this man used a lot the Uzi and uh, but uh, nowadays is uh, the like uh, this one. So who will learn the definitely Hadoop file system and the map user, especially the Yan. The Yan is the is version two, okay? It's a processing framework, these two. Then the who will learn the Hive, Pig, and the Uzi. And also a little bit about the HBase. HBase is the uh, HDFS based, based the database management system, okay? So it's not a relational model, it's uh, the who we see, the more detail, and the scoop and the flow. Jukeeper is the kind of the, this one. But you realize that most of the name are name of anyone. So nobody knows why, but uh, it's uh, probably starting from the name of the Hadoop, 
Adam actually named by Tom White, who was the founder, uh, the developer of the HD to GFS Google File System. When he named his the system, he actually the name after the his son toy, elephant toy is called the Hadoop. After that, the people tried to name about the peak or the hive or the. Uh, Flum is not, but the flum, the, I will show you why it's a flum, and the scoop, and so on. So then, the, by combining all of these animals, it's a zookeeper. The zookeeper is kind of monitor of the head of the ecosystem. Okay. Actually, there are more. You can go to the Apache, even I do not know most of them. So, the, it, you don't have to know, but the, if you go to the Apache Hadoop Foundation, you can see the list of the Hadoop ecosystem. The, if you can develop your own. The, I need the something, the A to B, the solution. Then the, you can the, actually start the, your business. So, and set what, the, what it can be the open source product. These are the, not all of them. I try to find as many as possible. This is the fact from the Google, the images. So you can see the, some of the solutions related to the NoSQL database, and uh, there are the distributed file system, and the new SQL is, uh, is uh, the from relational database NoSQL, and the new SQL can support the, uh, the relational database also, and the machine learning <coughs> solution also there are a lot, okay. Then the SQL, because the, as I introduced a lot of the, uh, the head of system, actually the like the working with the traditional, the relational the system, and the supporting the framework, there are even the, a lot. Okay. I do not know most of them. <coughs> and the security, scheduling, and the, all of these are the called the uh, ecosystem, which means that you should be able to pick up some of them based on the business requirement and you can build your own head of ecosystem later. Okay. I'm going to skip the this part of data science. Okay, so another part of the, this class is uh, I'd like to introduce the uh, data analytics. Uh, the, but the, I don't think we can cover the details of the algorithm. Instead, uh, such as uh, the details of the approach and algorithm itself uh, will be discussed in the uh, other classes, machine learning or the deep learning classes. So, uh, not machine learning, the data mining class. So then, instead, the, in our project, uh, you are going to kind of pretending the, such uh, the data analytics. The reason is that sometimes one of the benefit of using the big data, without applying the very complicated uh, airways, machine learning algorithm, you can get the result that you expect. So what I will show you the, such an example. That is, the, for example, the Google flu trend. I got the flu. <laughs> The Welcome to Google. It's not your screen. Today we're going to show you how the flu trend works. Google Flu Trends uses aggregated search data to estimate flu activity in near real time. Millions of people search for health information online. As you can imagine, there are more flu-related searches during flu season, and we found that certain search terms are good indicators of actual flu activity. We collaborated with the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, or CDC, to help us create Google flu trends for the U.S. For example, the past five years' flu seasons might have looked like this. We then look at the popularity of individual search queries over this time period. Using this method, we identified search queries that matched well with CDC's data. Google Flu Trends is updated in probably real time. For instance, on this date, 
Google search has detected a significant increase in the activity. CDC reported the same increase two weeks later. Even if the users are countries back. like Mexico, we don't have official historic data to work from. Instead, we look for flu-related search queries that appear to have a seasonal curve. Since these estimates have not been compared with official historic flu data, we label them experimental. Personal search data remains safe and private. So a traditional way to personal decide whether flu season will outbreak creates as the, the each doctor and how many of the patient as the temperature over the 100 on and uh, what you prescribe and uh, collect the those data, then the CDC decides this is the flu season. Flu season. But uh, using the big data, just the number of queries. Like the Earlier detection of flu temperature and public health officials then we can and the public to make more and more decisions flu season for in official information about flu activity, prevention, and treatment. Please visit your national or local health resource. So that is the power of the Check big out data. Sometimes the big data is served without the huge processing. We can get the the knowledge or information that we want. So that is the kind of idea of your project so from the project. We will, uh, so that's called uh, our the paradigm is from the <laughs> hypothesis driven, which means so somebody should have the insight or the something knowledge or the creativity. Like the, if we combine the, this one and this one, it will be the new invention. But the data driven, without understanding, without understanding what is a flu, we don't have to define what is a flu, but the, just the, uh, the counting. The number of query that include the temperature and the uh, cough, then the, we can easily decide the flu season. So, big data analytics is uh, much different from the uh, traditional analytics. Sometimes uh, without training, so many of the machine learning and uh, many of the uh, data mining. Technique, they are based on the train. We train, train, train this one and make the model, then apply the testing. But the big data solution, big data analytics, without, so they said uh, it's an experimental method like the Mexico, because they do not have the historical data, they cannot the proof, but the, they have the something, the experimental result for the flu outbreak in the Mexico, without the training, without the historical data. Okay. So, traditional data analytics, we usually select the some of the part of the data or the, the, this one is a training and this one is a testing. But the, in the big data solution, we can just use all the data as it is. Then, the, we build a hypothesis, like the, this is a class, the, the cat and dog, or this is a, uh, the uh, flu season, this is a non-flu season, and train and uh, make the model and uh, apply. But uh, in the big data solution, we just uh, the analyze. Analyze means uh, sometimes just count to what some and the very basic the statistical approach, then uh, we can uh, uh, find the solution of that. So, what if the future of the data-driven society? So everything will be based on the data, maybe, not sure. So it's called the dataism. So for example, the instead of economics, like the, when we, there are a lot of, the, think about the uh, financial company nowadays. They hire more and more data analysts, analysts from where? Computer science, rather than the economic department. Because they don't need, uh, sometimes uh, they don't need uh, the, the economic analyst. analyst. Their the salary is very high, but uh, their report is uh, every two weeks, like that. But if we have the data analytics based on the big data, it's uh, every moment. Even. So we can just uh, simple programming. If we can handle the, such a big data, then the, that output is um, much more valuable than the bi-weekly report from the economy. So that is the reason, really, the financial company, they hire and more and more the computer science students. 
that affect the dictator will affect the democracy also. What is a democracy? So how we can select the president? Think about such a thing. Then we, when we decide the president or something, who knows, later it will be based on the big data analysis. So somebody says it's a data topia. Then the problem comes from the here. If somebody owns the data, that owns the power. That's the problem. But the who will not discuss that part. But the, instead, who will focus on throughout the semester? So how to handle in terms of computer science, the point of view, the how to, uh, the what is the solution, and the practically who will practice how to keep the data and how to process data, then eventually how to get the output to analyze the data. So this course is related to the couple of other courses, the head and the if later. I will introduce the HBase and a little bit NoSQL database, but uh, eventually. So I, maybe next semester I will offer the Hadoop and the, not Hadoop, the NoSQL database, the mostly. And the data mining class. So if you are interested in the big data uh, and data analytics, the concentration, if you take the 651, 652, and 552, plus the uh, database course, the, you can apply the new concentration on the big data and data analytics. There are a lot of research opportunities also, if, if you are the PhD student. Okay? So these are the un incomplete list of the research opportunity provided by the NSF. Okay? okay, so that's the overview of the big data. The next class we will start from definitely uh, this one, the head of the head, what is the HFS, and the, what is the map reduced, and the plus the, followed by the uh, several times of the exercise work. Please bring your laptop the next class. We will start from the uh, introducing the Google uh, the cloud computing, GCP, then the, we will have the uh, lecture for the this. Any question? And also the next class I will introduce more about the uh, project that you are going to need to do. Obviously, we cannot have the real, the big data, right? So it's uh, the kind of the pretending the big data, but that doesn't mean you can just have the 100 instance, one megabyte size data. So reasonably, there might be the minimum the requirement to do it. But uh, you are going to create, the, uh, you are going to use your own the head of the system uh, using the virtual machine. So your laptop should be reasonable, the capacity. Like if you have the less than one gigabyte memory size, maybe a little bit hard. Okay. Uh, at that time, you can use the computer in the life, but uh, you know, during the exercise, like in this room, so you better have the uh, reasonable the capacity. But uh, how many students we have? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think the, a lot of students missing today, right? So, so I think the, at least the 30 students. If we have the less than 25 students, we can go to the, the console lab. So then the, that will be much powerful. But the, we will see by the next week. So, okay. Any questions?